Hey everyone and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be covering the six challenges as part of Wiser CTF uh, from last weekend. Uh, it was a six hour CTF and I ended up coming in fifth place. Um, yeah, let's get started. The first challenge is login as an admin. Uh, it says via the API, login as the admin username Fitza on the login page UI here. Um, so th this uh, competition was a little bit different than a normal CTF. Like normally we're supposed to get the flag. Here, a lot of the times like we're supposed to log into someone's account or find some information, not necessarily get the flag. So a little bit different. In this case, we're going to try to find the password for Fitza. Uh, and we're just given this uh, UI here. Um, so we can take the source code, open it up, um, and take a quick look. Um, cool. So they define this get user function. Uh, we can see right away there's a SQL injection. So it takes a username and password and it's doing string interpolation. Um, so uh, first challenge is, uh, you know, your baby SQL. Um, one thing that makes this challenge a little bit different is as part of this login call, uh, after it gets the user from the database, it's gonna make sure the password from the return record is equal to the password we supplied it. Um, so we need to know the password, otherwise we just don't get the response, which is a little bit interesting. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I asked uh, if the admin, if we were allowed to use SQL map and they said, sure. So I used SQL map for this challenge, making it much simpler. Um, so uh, to do that, I do SQL map, URL, this. Uh, there were a couple of different error flags we have to go through. Um, the first one is uh, we need to pass forms so we can find the username password form. Uh, it says, yes, we don't want to do all this uh, yes and no stuff. So we're just going to say batch. So it takes the default. Uh, we're going to get a not authorized. So then we do uh, is it ignore code, ignore code 401. Um, cool. Uh, it found an error based and a time based. We can try the error based, but it's going to error out. Um, <laughs> Uh, and so instead, we unfortunately, we have to use the time base. And the error-based, it's probably not working well because of this password check. Um, so that's that's my guess anyways. Uh, so cool. Um, so we're going to use the time base. So we do technique is equal to time. We're going to do dump. Uh, the time method or time-based blind is pretty slow. Um, so because of that, we're going to try to be as specific as possible. Uh, so we're going to ask for the users table. Uh, to capital T, and we only want one column, which is password. We let it run, uh, and it returns. So during the CTF, it was obviously much slower. These results are cached. Um, I think it took maybe like 10, 20 minutes or something. So I was working on the next challenge while this was running. Uh, but we can take the password, put it in here. We needed the username. They said Fitzer or something like that, uh, and this. So we sign in, and we see it works. Um, so like I said, we're not getting a flag. We're just supposed to put that as the payload. So in here, you would put payload uh, in JSON. Username is equal to Fitza. Password is equal to the password we found. Uh, and that was it. The next challenge is Augustus Gloop secret. Uh, it says get the Augustus Gloop user record with this ID uh, from the API. And we're going to be making API calls to call API. So like I said, normally during the CTF, I can type in here. But since it's after, uh, we can't play with it anymore. Um, so cool. We're going to be calling the call API. So I copied the source code over. Um, so for this, uh, we're calling here, we're giving it a body. Um, and so we're gonna supply API and token. Um, so for this challenge, this is like a API router. Uh, you make a call here and it forwards your API call to one of the backend calls. And so we have a get user and a get companies call. Um, you, we could just call these directly, but you know, as like I said, part of the solution, you have to go through this call API call. Um, so cool. Uh, so as part of the call API, uh, some of the requests, the endpoints are require authentication and some of them don't. And specifically the get user call, the one we want to call uh, to get the user record uh, is one that requires authentication, uh, but how they do that, uh, that route checking is broken. So it's going to take the API endpoint we want. It's going to do a trim, lowercase, replace, slash, and slash. Um, and then we have the API and it's going to check if uh, the API is included in this array. And so these are the sensitive routes. Um, if it is, uh, then it's going to make a uh, post request using Axios and it's just going to pass that API endpoint. Um, cool. So uh, I guess this is actually app too, so this might not have been accessible publicly now that I look at it. Um, but anyways, uh, cool. Yeah, it's an internal port, my bad. So we could not access it. You do have to go through this call API handler. Um, but anyways, uh, so if we do the, the route that requires authentication, we have to know what the token is and we don't know what the token is. So uh, either we need to leak the token or be clever and do something else. Um, it turns out the trick is to cheese it so that we use the unauthentic API call with a authenticated, um, or we use the unauthenticated API handler to a, an authenticated API endpoint. Um, and to do this, we just need to bypass this, this check right here, the includes API. So instead of passing um, 
uh, get user, which is what we want to use. We're going to pass get user question mark or get user shebang. Um, both of these are not a member of this array, so they pass. Uh, but when these get sent to this URL here, uh, we can see um, if it's a shebang, it's just ignored because that's client side only. And if it's a URL parameter, uh, it do doesn't matter because we're not specifying any. Um, and yeah, that was pretty much it. As part of that, uh, it's going to pass the JSON payload as part of the call API. And that'll get passed to get user. And on this, we just need to specify the user ID. This was given as part of the challenge description. Um, and that was it. So the total uh, solution, uh, we can't type it into that other input field, but we're going to do API is equal to get user question mark. I think I joined the CDF, I did shebang. And then user ID is equal to the one that it was given to us as part of the challenge description. Um, yeah, that was it. The next challenge is hack the menu. And for this, we're supposed to inject an alert uh, here. And we're specifying a URL. Uh, we can't modify it now, but we can add query parameters to the end of this URL. Um, so cool, we just need to get an XSS on this page. So if we copy the source code, we'll see it's a React app. Um, as part of the React app, it's defining the home function. Uh, and from the query string, it's going to take a parameter called direct link. Uh, if it exists, it is going to sanitize the link and do a router dot push on that link. Um, so we can test this out. So we can see if the direct link works. So we'll do direct link is equal to HTTPS my personal page. Uh, we can see it loads. So we know that uh, it's basically just doing a uh, window dot location. Um, and somehow we have to get uh, XSS from that. Uh, like I said, it goes through the sanitize function. And so it's going to search for the string JavaScript and iteratively remove that string until it doesn't exist anymore. Um, so if it only removed once, you know, we could do then a Java script or something like that. So it removes just the inside one, but we still have JavaScript, uh, but it moves it over, rem removes it over and over. So we can't do that trick. Uh, and the reason it's removing it is uh, you can do something like this. Uh, this will pop in XSS. Um, we're specifying JavaScript as our scheme handler, uh, and then it'll execute this, I think within the context of the page, uh, which is pretty nice. Uh, but like I said, the removing JavaScript, uh, thankfully there's a trick to get around this. Uh, for some reason, uh, schemes can have new line characters and they're filtered out. So we can do a percent OA, so a new line character. Uh, and this just works. I don't know why browsers accept it, but they do. Um, so we're going to set, uh, let's copy this out. Uh, do, 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 direct link. And then we're going to do uh, JavaScript. I already have it here. JavaScript percent OAT uh, alert wiser. We click enter and it works. So we have our alert box. So we just need to pass this URL to the box and we solve the challenge. The next challenge is sensitive flags. It says get the right flag from the list of flags. Um, cool, so we're going to copy over the source code. Uh, we can see the flag is defined here. So for this challenge, we're actually trying to get a flag. Uh, it's gonna define a, a object of, or a dictionary of users, one, but only one with admin. Um, there's a method to get API key, which we're not gonna use. There's a create API key, which we're not gonna use. And then there is this uh, get flag route, which has uh, two bugs that we're gonna exploit to get the flag. Um, so we can see here, it's going to take in from res.query, the query parameters, a username, an API key, and a flag. Um, so if the user, or if the username is a valid user, or user returns something, uh, that's true. And if the API key from our query string equals the API key for the username, uh, that's also cool. And then results will be equal to flags and the flag we want. And so we just want the capital case flag, which is the process end flag. Um, so to bypass this, uh, Let's do a quick node. Uh, so if we do users is equal to, it was admin and some unguessable token. The token might have actually been guessable. It's a UUID v1, uh, UUID v1. Uh, so if, like if this was in a Docker container or something, uh, the machine ID would be known. And then from there, you just need to guess the, the sequential time. So, and we can also refresh uh, the um, UUID. So it's possible uh, if this was running in a Docker container, uh, you could uh, guess this. Um, I don't think that was the intended solution, though, because uh, it's pretty sensitive to time. Um, and when I was checking the UIDs, uh, it didn't seem like the ho or the uh, machine ID was constant for some reason. So not really sure what that was about. So it didn't seem like that was the intended solution. Uh, but anyways, so we have this user. Uh, but it turns out there are other things that exist on this user object besides just admin. Uh, there is also a function called toString uh, that exists. And there's also uh, uh, dunder proto. Um, so a bunch of stuff that exists on this that aren't necessarily the things that we defined, and we can use that to bypass the check. So if we pass in, let's say, uh, Dunder Proto, um, this will be true. Uh, Rec.Query, we're not going to pass one, so it'll be undefined. And then uh, this will be uh, Proto, the Proto object. It doesn't have an API key defined, so this will also be undefined. So undefined equals undefined equals true. So it's going to save the results here. 
So that was the, uh, the first step. Uh, the second step, we're supposed to have an authorization header. So uh, it's going to check uh, if the authorization header exists. If not, it's going to do no auth. Then it's going to grab the token. So in our case, this will just be auth. Uh, then it's going to do a JSON web token verify. Uh, it's going to pass an error because obviously we're not passing a real header. So it's going to set the status and set the location. Uh, as the second bug in this challenge was they didn't have a return statement here. And so because of that, um, they're still going to return uh, the result, which was the flag. Uh, so because of that, we don't actually have to worry about this header. We're just going to get the flag anyways. Um, so our entire payload for this ends up being uh, username, username for the CTF I did proto. Uh, we're not going to pass an API key. We are going to pass a flag. Oh, these were query string parameters. Sorry. Uh, so the <laughs> it'll be username is equal to uh, proto, and then flag is equal to flag. Um, and I think that was it. <laughs> so uh, nice simple payload. Uh, and we, we submit that to the URL, and uh, I think it's solved. I think then we get the flag, and then you have to make a post request to submit flag with the flag, um, and then you solve the challenge. The next challenge is payloadception. Uh, this description uh, is wrong. It shouldn't say that, uh, but we'll get back to that in a second. Uh, we're given some source code, and we're going to make a uh, request to check with uh, some sort of JSON payload. Um, so for this challenge, uh, basically, we needed to generate a polyglot payload that bypassed a whole bunch of checks. Um, and so those checks are in LFI. So our payload, it's the same exact payload for all of these. It needs to resolve to Etsy password. It needs to be a SQL injection that returns the admin user. It needs to do a server-side request forgery that grabs internal secrets from localhost. It needs to do a command injection that ret returns the environment variable command. It needs to do a server-side template injection that returns uh, the environment variable command. It needs to do an XSS and pop an alert. Um, and yeah, it's all the same payload. It has to be less than 137 characters. Uh, so like I said, the challenge description said get flag. And I was like, okay, I'll get the flag. Again, being a typical CTF player. Um, and so we, uh, this was probably very interesting if you're a CTF player. Uh, so we have an interesting exec call here, ls plus our payload. So we just need to pass enough checks so that we get into this command injection. And from there, we're just gonna exfiltrate the flag. Uh, this is what I did. So I exfiltrated the flag, but then I couldn't submit it anywhere. And so I reached out to the admin and they were like, no, you actually need to bypass the checks, not get the flag, like the description said. Uh, but thankfully, not all was lost. Uh, as part of uh, stealing the flag, it was in some like environment file or something. I think, uh, sorry, sorry, backing up, either curl or get was on the box, so you can just uh, um, use that to do uh, just base64 encode some data and send it out, and uh, you can read the files on disk. Um, but because I could see the M file on disk, I could see what this command variable was. So instead of having to do like a full length command injection and a full length server side template injection, I could just echo this thing. And I think it was called like command injection in Leet speak um, or something like that. So it made my payload a little bit simpler um, for all my hard work of getting a shell on the box. Uh, yeah, but otherwise we just build up a polyglot payload. Um, to actually do that, I did it in uh, Burp Suite. So let's go all the way over here. We'll paste this, we'll go to uh, HTTP history. Uh, send this to repeater. So here we need to make a post request and we're gonna do uh, content type application JSON and it was a uh, payload, I think. Cool, so we failed the check LFI. Um, so uh, we're not gonna, I'm not gonna go through all of them. I'll just show the final payload, but I think it was Etsy password. So we can see uh, this passes the first check and now we have to pass the SQL injection. Um, the payload I ended up on is this one. I'll just copy it out. Uh, cool. So we can see our uh, server-side request forgery in here, then a comment character. Now we have a command injection. Again, I'm not printing out uh, the environment variable since I already know what it is, since I exfiltrated it as part of the command injection. Uh, we can see we have an XSS here. It's wrapped in the same quote as the command injection. Then we have another comment character. We can, this is the quote character for the SQL injection. So all of this will be treated as a username. And then the rest will, this will be the SQL injection and then a comment character. And then at the very end, I have the uh, uh, local file inclusion. Uh, but if you send this payload, Hopefully it still works. Uh, we can see we passed all the checks. Um, so if you submit this payload as uh, the payload on the website, um, you solve the challenge. Cool, and the last challenge is sign here. It just says, get the flag. Cool, so like always, we copy out the source code. Um, we can see they're defining two users. There's a required login, a verify signature, um, a login route, a route to grab the flag, a route to download an APK. 
um, and a submit flag. Uh, so there is an APK, and so really this challenge was more of a reversing challenge in my opinion. Um, we can see we can get the flag here, but we have to have a valid login and a valid uh, signature. Um, the login, we just need to supply a username and password if we can bypass the signature check. Uh, and for this, we're given a username and password, which was username or user and password. So we do have a valid login, thankfully. Um, so really the only hard thing we have to do is pass the signature check. Uh, the signature check is doing an HMAC uh, with a secret. Um, it's gonna take in the URL and the body and uh, make sure that the signature matches. Um, so we need the secret. So if we take uh, this APK, um, so the Android file, uh, you can load it onto your uh, phone if you have an Android phone using uh, Android Device Bridge, ADB. You just do adb install sign here.apk. Um, I can't show you because I'm using my phone to record, uh, but it'll just be like a little web form and it'll have a URL, username, and password. So I put in a website uh, or webhook.site um, into there to see how it works or what it sends. Um, and it actually includes the signature when it makes that post request. Um, so that's interesting. Uh, for it to do that, it means it must know the HMAC secret. Um, and if it knows the HMAC secret, uh, it's somewhere within the APK bundle, so we just need to do some reversing and find it. Um, so to do that, I took the APK, I took it over to this tool, uh, this uh, decompiler.com. I started using this recently instead of JADX. Um, it just works very well. Uh, so you upload the APK and you can download the Java code. If you download the Java code though, unfortunately, uh, if you go to main activity, you're gonna see that there's not much here, but it says something about React. Uh, so this is probably using a React native app. Uh, so if you do some researching on that, you find out that as part of React Native, there's some file called index Android bundle. So React Native sometimes get com gets compiled down uh, to some like JavaScript bytecode that's executed by some Hermes engine, and it's stored in this index Android bundle, which was under the resources directory, I think. Uh, cool, so we need a decompiler for that. Uh, thankfully, it exists. Uh, Hermes DEC uh, is what I ended up using. Uh, they have some... Uh, a tool called HPC decompiler. You pass it the, ind or the index Android bundle and it outputs some JavaScript. Uh, it's not the cleanest JavaScript, but it is good enough. Um, on this, I think I just did a control F for username. You kind of go through and eventually you find the code that's making the request to slash login. Um, and you see this like weird string here, which seems uh, very interesting. So you take that, go to CyberChef. Uh, you decode it from hex. Uh, and once CyberChef loads, uh, we can see that it is most likely the secret key that we are looking for. So slow. I need to get a new computer. Uh, from Hex, and it says, this is a very good secret. Cool, so we uh, we found the secret. Uh, from there, we just had to write up the solve script. Uh, solves this one. Um, so we needed something that calculates that signature. Same as the Node.js code. Uh, we could do this in Node.js, just in Python. Um, so it takes in the URL uh, and the body, calculates the signature. Uh, one trick is uh, you're not supposed to use the decoded version. You're supposed to use the full hex version um, when generating the signature. Uh, thankfully, as part of that webhook request, I had a valid signature uh, path uh, JSON body pair. So I could uh, quickly test to make sure my, my generate signature function was working. Um, it took a second uh, to get that working. Um, so I print it out. And then we just run the, the exploit, which wasn't really even an exploit. We're going to log in with username and password. We're going to pass in a valid signature, so a signature with the path and the same body. Uh, from there, we have a valid session. We're using sessions from request. Uh, so we have a valid session. We know how to generate signatures, so we can make the request a flag with the ID of the admin. Uh, this will return the flag, and after that, we're pretty much done. Um, you just need to submit the flag as uh, a JSON payload, and you win. And that was all the challenges. So if you made it this far, uh, thank you for watching. Um, like I said, it was a pretty fun CTF. Uh, I have another video coming up this week. It'll be on uh, WebRTC CSP bypass. Um, I actually already recorded it, but it was too in the weeds. So I'm going to re-record it, uh, make it a little bit faster. Um, otherwise, I will see you at the next CTF. Cheers.